All right, everybody, welcome back. Thanks for being here today. Uh, so today's video is 15 general brands that you, and by you, I mean me, pronounce wrong. So I'm curious about this video because I have a feeling she's about to attack me for 15 minutes on, on how I've been pronouncing a lot of these things. Um, I'm curious to see what all I've been pronouncing wrong. Um, you know, I'm hoping that at the beginning of each segment, she pops it up on there and I can at least pause it and say how I think it's said, and then she tells me how wrong I am. So without further ado, let's get into the 15 German brands that I pronounce wrong. Um, not sure. Maybe you've left them in the car? Oh, and your friend's Volkswagen? Huh? Volkswagen? The car brand? It's a German car brand. You should know that. Oh, VW. Okay. And I'm already attacked because I, I seriously thought it was Volkswagen. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but have been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. Right. So a little update before I get into the topic. She lives a few hours away from me. Not too far, not too bad. I had my wrist surgery last Tuesday. Everything went well and my insurance approved it, so they're fully paying for it, which is Good great. Um, I was pretty knocked out afterwards for a few days, but I'm doing better every day. And today is the first time that I thought I would try to record something, as you can see. Good deal. I'm having Good deal. my Good first follow-up appointment in four days. And as promised, there will be another video about this topic in a few weeks. But a few weeks ago, before I broke my wrist, I made a video about mistakes that many Germans make when speaking English. And a lot of you guys asked me to make a video the other way around about mistakes that non-native well, speakers just make see, in German. And you know. that's definitely going to come. But there's actually a very similar topic that I've been wanting to cover for a while. So that's what I'll talk about today. German brand names that English native speakers often pronounce very differently than we do in Germany. And some of these brands you may not even realize that they're German. So okay. I made a list of 15 German brand names that are typically mispronounced in English and I'm going I'm expecting to see a lot of car brands because I well I'm not even going to say them right now maybe BMW I can't imagine I'm saying that one incorrectly it's literally three letters I'm going to tell you how they're pronounced correctly in German and also give you a little background information on some of them as well. This video was sponsored by Skillshare, which I've talked about before. It's an online learning community that offers thousands of classes for... The first one is Audi. Most of Americans that I know pronounce it like I... I say Audi. That's how I've been taught and that's what I always learned was it was an Audi. Just said it. Audi. In German, we say Audi. Audi, and there's actually a funny story as to where this name came from. So was, In 1904, a guy I, called I do August Torch founded a eye, car but... company called A. Torch und Company Motorenwarenwerke Zwickau, but a few years later, he left the company and founded a new one but he wasn't allowed to call it Horch again. And since that's not only his last name, but also means listen in the imperative form, he ended up translating it into Latin and that's Audi. So Audi means listen. The Audi. company is located in Ingolstadt in Bavaria. Then of course, one of the most famous car brands in the world is this one. I say Porsche. Now, when I was working at the dealership, with a buddy of mine, he said Porsche, and I'm like, nah, it's Porsche, it's Porsche. And that's, I'm sure that's how she's gonna say. I was messing with it, but I, I believe it's Porsche. It's located in Stuttgart, Germany. I've heard Stuttgart. Americans I pronounce it Porsche or Porsche. In German, we say Porsche. So there's like oh. this short A sound in the end. Porsche. It was founded Porsche. by Ferdinand okay. Porsche in 1931 okay. as a company for vehicle development work and consulting. And one of the first assignments that the company had was from the Nazi government at the time to design a car for the general public, which was what later would become Volkswagen. And so they designed the Volkswagen Beetle, the VW Käfer. Huh. This one sounded super funny to me when I first heard now, I, I have a feeling I'm already going to be wrong. I've always just been what you think, Mercedes-Benz. Heard how people pronounce it in English. I actually used to drive one back in Germany. Um, so most Americans call this Mercedes. In German, we pronounce it Mercedes. Mer so Mer Mercedes versus 
Mercedes. 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 So it's really okay. pretty different. And the full name, of course, is Mercedes Benz. I've also heard that in England, people Mercedes. also refer to Mercedes, Mer Mercedes. as Merck. Um, a German will not know what you're talking about if you say that, just for your information. Originally, it was just the company Daimler Motorengesellschaft, founded in 1890. The name Mercedes was added later, inspired by a Daimler car dealer called Emil Jelinek, who was also driving car races under the alias Monsieur Mercedes, which was based huh. on his daughter's first name, Mercedes Jelinek. The name was later also used for one of the car models in the year 1900, and then eventually became the name of the brand itself. This one simply has three letters, but of course they're pronounced BMW. differently in English and in German. Of course, uh, of in English, are. people say BMW. In German, we say BMW because W is pronounced W in German, I, I and it stands for Bayerische Motorenwerke, which means Bavarian Engine Works. And of course, BMW is located in my hometown, Munich, which is the capital of Bavaria. The company was founded in 1916, and originally I should have known because I know it's like Wiener Schnitzel not Wiener Schnitzel, you know what I mean? I should have known that was he a mainly produced a v, aircraft yeah. engines. It's said that the logo represents a plane propeller and it also has the colors of Bavaria, oh. blue and white, to I show the company's it. origin. Cool. Then after World War I, they survived by producing motorcycle engines, farm equipment, household items and railway brakes, and built their first motorcycle in 1923 and then became a car manufacturer a few years later. They then went back to concentrating on aircraft engines again during World War II using forced labor from prisoners in concentration camps and didn't get back into car manufacturing until 1952. Overall, all of these German car brands that I just mentioned are more or less considered luxury brands in yeah. the US. I mean, Porsche, of course, is considered a luxury brand in Germany as well, but Audi, Mercedes and BMW are pretty much just regular car brands to us. Obviously, they do have expensive luxury cars as well, but the regular models are driven by people from all social classes in Germany. Interesting. Very interesting. English speakers call this Volkswagen, while in Germany we usually just call it VW, VW, VW. But even if we did go by the full name, it would be pronounced Volkswagen and not Volkswagen. So just imagine that it was spelled with an F and V instead. Volkswagen. Volkswagen. This literally means people's Ugh. car or car of the people. And it was founded during the Third Reich in the late 1930s because Hitler wanted to have a car that was affordable for middle-class Germans and I... that met the needs of an average family. So I don't feel attacked at all. I just feel like... I'm just stupid. <laughs> oh, this was his attempt to make cars something that wasn't only available to upper class people, but to the general public. And the company is based in Wolfsburg. Now let's move on to something other than cars. So this is one of the brands where when I heard Americans say Adidas. this for the first time, I didn't understand Adidas. at all what they were referring to because they usually pronounce it Adidas. And in Germany, we say Adidas. Adidas? Adidas. Adidas. Super Roxy. different. It's the second largest sportswear manufacturer in the world after Nike. And I don't think that a lot of people know that this is a German company. I had no it idea. also has an interesting backstory. I truly thought it was from the US. It was founded by Adolf Dassler, whose nickname was Adi. So the brand name is based on his first and last name. Adidas. Adi Das. Nice. He founded the company at his mother's house after he returned from World War I. And he actually played a big role in developing spiked running shoes. In 1924, his brother Rudolf joined the company and they founded the Dassler Brothers Shoe Factory. Nice, very but nice. they later got into a fight, split up, and his brother actually founded his own company nice. called Puma, which became the biggest rival of Adidas. So both Adidas and Puma are German brands. Huh. Oh, yeah. Another shoe manufacturer that many Germans would probably consider Birkenstock. very, very German. Like if you talk about something typically German, Birkenstock is definitely going to be mentioned, I mean, it's not but too of far course off. this brand is known. It's not too far off. Oh, what I hit? Oh, I hit copyright or uh, captions all over the world nowadays and it's natural that people pronounce it with their native accent. So English speakers usually say Birkenstock. In German, we say Birkenstock. 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 Okay. 
Birkenstock, which literally translates to birch stick. The roots of the company go all the way back to the 18th century, by the way. Hey. From shoes to alcohol, this is yeah. pronounced Jägermeister in yeah. German. Jägermeister. English speakers usually say Jägermeister, which is pretty much the same, just with a pretty thick accent. And people also often use the abbreviation Jäger, like I've already, I already Jäger, learned how to say that one, so I wasn't going to comment on that. It literally means Huntmaster. Jäger is the hunter and Meister is master, and it's a German herbal liquor. Herbal liquor? This is a German grocery store. Now, I say Aldi. Or, excuse me, or, hey... So if you want to Walmart, go to Aldi's. You can also find them in other European countries, and they even have some stores in the U.S. I usually get the majority of my groceries at Aldi here in the U.S. Aldi. In Germany, we call stores like Aldi or Lidl discounters because they sell groceries for very low prices. In English, people usually pronounce this Aldi. I think I've also heard Aldi before, but I think most people say Aldi. Or they also sometimes add an S that isn't there in the end and say That's Aldi's. Me. In Germany, we just say Aldi. It has its origins in 1945 when the two brothers Theo and Karl Albrecht took over their mother's corner store and came up with the concept of having a small selection while having low prices. The name Aldi comes from Albrecht Discount, so Albrecht, which is their last Some name, Some of these things people discount. come up with are just In Germany, we name. have Aldi Süd and Aldi Nord, Aldi South and Aldi North. Again, this is because of two brothers splitting up into two different businesses. In the US, the store is simply called Aldi and it actually belongs to Aldi South, while the store Trader Joe's belongs to Aldi North. Huh. Now let's move on to cosmetics. You know. Nivea is a German brand from Hamburg that's mainly known for its face lotion in the little blue container. But of course, they offer a large I've variety never tried of to say products it, so I can't nowadays. Call it. Again, I find the English pronunciation pretty funny here. English native speakers usually say Nivea, Nivea. In German, we say Nivea, Nivea. So Nivea. the emphasis is on the e, Nivea. This is a German hair cosmetics brand that you can. Schwarzkopf. Find all over the world pretty much. Schwarzkopf In German, like we pronounce it Schwarzkopf, Schwarzkopf. which literally means black yeah. head. Schwarzkopf. English native speakers usually pronounce it Schwarzkopf or Schwarzkopf or something along those lines. Deutsche Bank is the largest. Okay, well, she already said it there. It's kind of funny how we look at it, and I, I never think to pronounce the W's more like V's, but yeah, we'll say, you know, Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf. And it's like the V is there, it just pops out in my head. It's, it's weird how that bank works. In Germany, Deutsche Bank also literally means German bank. Of course, you can find <laughs> Deutsche Bank not only in Germany, but in other countries as well. A good friend of mine here in Cincinnati actually just did an internship with them in their New York City location. And she's also going to start a full-time job with them soon. And Americans usually pronounce it Deutsche Bank or something along those lines. And my friend always uses the abbreviation Deutsch when she refers to it. Um, so like she said, I got a job offer from Deutsch, which is just really funny to me because that literally just means German. <laughs> This is a German manufacturer of high-end domestic appliances. Yeah. And it's not exactly pronounced wrong in English, but English native speakers usually say something like Miele, Miele. Yeah. Um, so it usually sounds more like an A in the end, whereas in German we say Miele. 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 So the okay. last letter is just I've, no, I've never heard of that And Miele so. really does stand for quality. If you invest in a Miele dishwasher or washing machine, you okay. just know that it's going to be a good product and it's going to last. Okay. So unlike Ford products here in the US. This is something that everyone knows and loves, hopefully. Maybe not everyone knew that Haribo is actually German. I didn't know that. I'm not a gummy bear Haribo. fan, I'm sorry. Haribo. And again, the name originates in the name of the founder of the company, which was Hans Riegel, and he was from the city of Bonn in Germany. So Hans Riegel from Bonn, and he always took the first two letters, put oh. them together, and it became Haribo. How are these people Hans so clever? Hans Riegel Bonn. Haribo. I literally sat for like three hours trying to figure out what my YouTube name was going to be for this channel. I finally just put my name out there. Well, some of my name is not my full name, but... And 
Last but not least, let's talk about a company that Never is not one. doing super well during these times, but it's one of the largest companies Lufthansa. in Germany and second largest airline in Europe. And maybe you've flown with them before. In English, people usually say Lufthansa, but in German, Lufthansa. we say Lufthansa. So the emphasis little, on the first little syllable, different accent, but Lufthansa, I got Lufthansa it. versus Lufthansa. And that was the last brand name on my list. So now, of course, I want to know from you guys which of these brand names you've always mispronounced and maybe which ones you didn't even realize were German brands. And also let me know in the comments below which German brand or maybe... Okay, well, that was an interesting video. Um, there's some brands I've never even heard of, like the the last one, you know, the air, airline brand, um, the one that's M-I-E-L-E, -E, the one that signifies, like, you know, you're getting a solid product. Um, but, you know, some of these I definitely have been pronouncing wrong, and the more I'm digging into Germany, the more I'm seeing how I was wrong with them. But, hey man, you know, that just comes from the difference in dialects and languages and everything, and I love it. I love it. So what are some English words that you guys think that we, pr or, uh, that you guys pronounce incorrectly? What are some of the ones that she missed? Um, I'm very curious to see your guys' comments on this and, and what you guys think. Um, but thank you all so much for being here today. Like the video if you haven't already. Consider subscribing to the channel if you could. That would be amazing. It's free for you. It helps me tremendously. We're trying to get YouTube partnered. We're getting closer and closer and closer. Um, but, you know, it's just it's just a grind. And I love it. I love it. So thank you all so much for being here. Um, share the video out with all your friends. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.